It's your girl, your host, Jocelyn, y como siempre, I am so grateful you are here. Before we get into this conversation, I'd like to give a trigger warning on grief. I know you saw the title of this episode, but I'd just like to make it clear that yes, we are talking about grief in this conversation. So if you've experienced grief in your life, then you may feel triggered, but also comforted by this conversation. And if you feel you have not experienced grief in your life, then you may learn something new in this conversation, and I encourage you to keep listening. Nevertheless, this episode may require a certain level of emotional capacity, so I encourage you to create a safe space for yourself by getting comfortable wherever it is that you are in this moment and perhaps make yourself some hot herbal tea if possible. I also encourage you to receive this episode and honestly every episode from this podcast as if it's a conversation between you and a dear friend. After all, we are a human family and we truly are all in this together. Before we dive in, I'd just like to take a moment to express that if you've enjoyed this podcast, if you appreciate this podcast, your girl, your host would appreciate if you head on over to Apple Podcasts, search the Starting With Gratitude page, scroll down, find the stars and comment box waiting for you to share your rating and review and let the people know why it is that you've enjoyed this podcast, that you appreciate this podcast, and that you recommend others tune into this podcast. Ratings and reviews on Apple Podcasts truly make such a big difference. And I would really appreciate if you just took that brief moment to express how it is and what it is that you feel about this podcast, about this community, about the conversations that we have here. So for all of you who have already left a rating and review, thank you so, so much for doing so. Truly, truly, truly appreciate you. Grief is one of those inescapable human experiences that's uncomfortable to talk about for many, like death and other taboo topics of conversation. But it is so important that we do talk about it, that we do talk about grief, because again, it's an inescapable human experience. Like many of the other conversations between you and I on this podcast, this is a conversation that my younger self needed to hear. And I'm honestly really looking forward to having this heart to heart conversation with you. I wasn't planning on publishing an episode on grief at this time, but the reason why it's come up for me now is because I'm currently experiencing grief. Last week, our family cat passed away unexpectedly. His name was Olive, and he was the bestest cat in the wholest, whitest, worldest. He was still young, in great shape, in good health, so this death was honestly a shock for all of us. My mom adopted Olive with the intention for Olive to serve as emotional support for my little brother when my dad passed away back in 2011. So my whole family immediately felt most concerned for my little brother and how he was going to receive the news of Olive's passing as he was closest to Olive. Just in this past week alone, it's been really interesting for me to experience newfound grief and to observe how my family and I have been responding to grief in our own ways. When I first read the text from my mom, which was right after I woke up, I was in complete shock. Still to this day, I feel I am in shock. I mean, granted, at the time of this recording, it's only been a little over a week. I keep telling my little brother that I can't believe Olive is dead, which is all the proof I need to diagnose myself as still being in shock. However, I will say that although grief doesn't necessarily ever get easier, no matter how many times or in how many ways you experience it in this life, I do feel that my many experiences with grief and the ways of which I responded to my grievances have helped me receive and accept grief when it shows up in life, which is something I am really grateful for. My mindfulness practices, my spiritual practices, my self-care practices, all the investments I've made in my mental, physical, spiritual states of well-being have gifted me a lot of knowledge 
and wisdom and medicine such as self-compassion to experience the many motions of life such as this in a way that is accepting and not rejecting. For example, yes, I am in shock right now, which is a reflection of denial. However, I understand that this is a natural part of grief and I have compassion for myself. My shock is sincerely understandable and valid. So I'm intentionally and mindfully allowing myself to feel shocked, to feel whatever else arises in this moment of loss and of grief. So although shock may be a reflection of denial, I am not denying what I am feeling and I am not denying the truth that this is a natural response to grief. I also have been very understanding of the fact that I have felt exhausted the days following the news and validated my being exhausted. I allowed myself to rest more, to not respond to messages, to take a week off from content creating and affirm to myself that it's okay that I do so. Truly, I am so grateful for the compassion I have developed for myself. These practices and investments in myself have also gifted me the emotional and energetic capacity to show up for others, especially those I love, without neglecting myself. That said, the big sister in me prioritized being present for my little brother at this time. My little brother is eight years younger than me, and those eight years do make a difference when it comes to life experience. Observing his responses to this loss and observing my responses to his responses was and has been very telling for me. What really stuck with me from his responses was that us humans really do have the tendency to react to loss by questioning ourselves and what we could have done differently, what we could have done better. We have the tendency to react to loss by wishing we did differently, wishing we did better. And I find it so interesting that during such a hard time, we react by being hard on ourselves, making the whole situation so much harder. Why is it that we react to losses with blaming ourselves and or others in some way? I say this because this has been true for me. Not in this specific case with Olive, but when I experienced my father's loss, I spent a long time ruminating on what I could have done differently and could have done better. When I experienced my best friend's loss, I ruminated in what I could have done differently, what I could have done better. And in both cases, for a long time, I really believe that had I done differently, had I done better, there could be a chance that they'd still be alive and well today. Do you understand the weight of that? One of the reasons why I believe humans have the tendency to do this is because humans have this need to have a solution for everything and therefore have the desire to fix everything, right? I mean, this would partly explain why we have the desire to fix other people when we feel they need fixing, to fix ourselves when we feel we need fixing. This would also partly explain why we have the tendency to give people unsolicited advice. We feel responsible to have the solutions, to have all the answers, when we need to understand that in this life, we won't have all the solutions, we won't have all the answers, and that's okay. We are not responsible to have all the solutions or have all the answers. It's okay to allow some things in life left unsolved and unanswered because that's life. Life is mysterious in that way and in many ways. And I truly feel it's so important that we really understand this. When my little brother kept ruminating on what we could have done differently, what we could have done better, I felt compassion because I understand why he was reacting this way. But I also gently reminded him that there truly and simply is no could have done differently or could have done better. The unexpected death of our cat Olive is simply a part of this life. My mom has been consistently checking in on my little brother and a few days ago, my mom texted me and said, Carlo isn't doing good, is he? And you know what I thought? I thought, well, 
Depends on how you define good. My little brother has been feeling his feelings. He's been crying when he feels called to cry, expressing what's on his heart and mind. Given that his cat died just a little over a week ago, I would say he's doing pretty good. Of course, in my mom's eyes and in most people's eyes, they'd perceive Carlo as doing not so good. A couple days ago, I received some messages from a friend. And he said that after hearing my voice, it sounds like I'm doing good. And you know what I thought? I thought, why are we all so obsessed with doing good after experiencing loss and grief? Like, really? People always want you to do good and to be good. And I understand, totally understand. They are good intended. That was a good pun, LOL. (laughs) But again, it's okay to not be okay. And again, it also depends on how you define good. Like if you just experienced a major loss or any kind of loss in your life and you're crying and you feel sad and you feel like your heart is aching and you feel tired and you are you know, in the mood to be in solitude and really just kind of feel your feelings. Like I would say you're, you're doing pretty good, you know, given the circumstances, given what you're going through. If, you know, you experience a loss in your life that is of meaning to you and you're going about your life as if nothing has happened, then, then I would question, you know, are, are you good? Are you doing, are you okay? That's when I would, you know, be concerned. But I just find it so interesting that we are concerned for other people when they respond to life in ways that are just so natural. I feel like this goes back to what I mentioned earlier about humans being fixated on having solutions and answers and therefore having the desire to fix everything. But again, it's okay to not be okay. It's okay to not feel okay, especially if you're experiencing loss and grief. Grief is one of those emotions where it often carries other emotions. Like when you feel anger, typically you're clearly just feeling anger. When you're feeling anxious, typically you're clearly just feeling anxious. When you feel hungry, typically you're clearly just feeling hungry. But when you feel grief, Sometimes you're not sure what you're feeling. Sometimes it's not clear. Sometimes it's grief, but not just grief. Sometimes you feel grief, but also shock and confusion and rage and frustration and guilt and shame and and helplessness and hopelessness and sadness and all the things. And truly, that's just the experience of grief. And the sooner we accept that, the sooner our grief can experience the healing it needs. Truly, self-compassion and self-validation are sacred medicines for grief. Two of the most important lessons I've learned about grief is that one, we all grieve differently. And there isn't necessarily a right way to grieve. And two, you don't necessarily move on from grief. You move forward with it. There isn't a particular set timeline or deadline to grief. And my younger self really needed to know both of these lessons. When I lost my father, I remember being super perplexed about this. It was and is such a huge loss. And I wasn't sure if I was grieving the right way. I felt like I was grieving the wrong way. I didn't know if there was a particular amount of time I should be grieving, and if there'd be a time I'd be over it, quote unquote. And I feel like all this confusion and the heaviness of this confusion made the grieving process a lot harder for me. Had I known that we all grieve differently and that you don't really move on from grief, especially not when it's a grief of a dear loved one, I feel like that would have lifted a lot of weight off my already weighted shoulders. As the weeks passed, the months passed, the years passed, 
I noted that my grief comes and goes in waves, in monsoons, in winds, in storms. I noted the weathers of grief are unpredictable. I noted that every sweet celebratory moment of my life was accompanied by some bitterness to it because my father, Miapa, wasn't there to celebrate with me. And what really made me realize that grief isn't something you move on from, but rather move forward with, is thinking about the truth that my father won't be there to walk me down the aisle, won't be there to see me become a mother, won't be there to become a grandfather. Every special moment of my life is going to be bittersweet because a special person won't be there. And I've accepted that. I've accepted grief as a part of life, as a part of my life, as a part of the human experience. And I'm honestly grateful for this acceptance. This acceptance feels like a surrender. I surrender to the grief when it comes and I surrender the grief when it goes. I'd like to take a moment to thank our partner, Athletic Greens, for supporting this podcast and the conversations that take place in this podcast community. I'd also like to thank them for introducing me to their product called AG1. I've been taking it for three weeks or so now, and I know my higher self is so happy to know that each and every single day with just one scoop of AG1 in the morning, I am absorbing 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, whole food sourced ingredients, probiotics, and adaptogens that help me start my day right, that optimize my overall mental, physical, spiritual well-being. AG1 is a small micro habit with huge benefits. It's one thing you can do every single day to take great care of yourself. And your subscription comes with a year's supply of vitamin D, which is so important to add in these upcoming winter months when we don't get as much sunlight. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop in a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free, again, one year supply of immune supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com forward slash SWG. Again, that is athleticgreens.com forward slash SWG to take ownership of your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. I have put the link in the description below. Now let's get back into this conversation. Earlier in this conversation, as I spoke on ruminating on what I could have done better or done differently, I brought up the loss of my father and the loss of my best friend. There's something significant about these losses that I feel is important to bring up in this conversation. What makes these losses significant is that I saw them coming. Like our cat dying last week was an unexpected loss which is its own kind of grief. Though I will say that I had an intuitive feeling, but that's a whole other conversation. Whereas my father's death and my best friend's death, I knew those losses were coming and that's a different kind of grief. I won't get into the specifics of how I knew they were coming because both are very personal. However, to give an example, this would be similar to a loved one being diagnosed with an illness and having the knowing of approximately how much time they have left to live. The reason why I say this kind of grief is different is because the grief begins before the loss, because you feel the loss before the loss. Although this kind of grief feels somewhat like a prolonged heartbreak, what I will say is that this kind of grief taught me how to be fully present. 
taught me how to be in the present moment. It taught me how to cherish the moment, to cherish those you love. Because when you really know, like really know that soon enough they're going to be gone and you don't know exactly when, but you know it soon, it inspires you to be all there with them when you're with them. I can confidently say that I truly cherished every moment I had with my father, with my papa, and with my best friend, increasingly so nearing their passing. In this conversation, I primarily touched on the grief of our family cat and touched a bit on grieving my father and my best friend, but what I've shared in this conversation I feel truly applies to the many causes of grief, and the year 2020 is a great example of this. I won't expand on it too much, but I feel I experienced so many different causes of grief in 2020, which I am sure so many of you can relate to. I grieved the loss of my best friend, the loss of my career, the loss of my romantic relationship, the loss of other friendships, the loss of my apartment, the loss of my grandma, the loss of my health, and the loss of something I don't think we talk enough about the loss of my past self, the loss of who I no longer was, the loss of my identities. I grieved and am still honestly grieving so many different kinds of losses that I experienced in 2020. And given the truth that so many of us did that year and truly collective grief is a thing, I feel it's so important that we be mindful of this, that we not bypass this, that we practice compassion and validation both towards ourself and others. I'm bringing this up because for all of you listening, I want you to know that grieving whatever your losses have been and will be are valid. There is no right way to grieve. There is no deadline to grief. And also, there is no limit to what may cause us grief. Whatever you feel has caused you grief in your life, it is valid. I want to bring this conversation to a close by sharing two of my favorite movie scenes that touch on grief and the way I feel about grief and loss. The first scene is from one of my favorite movies called Something's Gotta Give. And to preface, the mother is going through a heartbreak and the daughter, who avoids getting into committed romantic relationships, finds the mother crying by herself outside. Hey, mom, we're going into town. Okay. Are you crying? My new thing. I've gotten abnormally brilliant at it. Why? What is it? I'm in love. <laughs> Great. Seems like I gotta learn how to do that. <laughs> love him and leave him stuff, you know? Oh, Mom, I hate this. Oh. Now do you get my theory about all this? You gotta self protect. Uh, you don't really buy this stuff you say, do you? You don't actually think that you can outsmart getting hurt. I think it's worth trying. Listen to me. You can't hide from love for the rest of your life because maybe it won't work out. Maybe you'll become unglued. It's just not a way to live. Are you telling me this is good, what's happened to you? I think you should consider the possibility that you and I are more alike than you realize. I let someone in, and I had the time of my life. I've never had the time of my life. I know, babe. And I say this from the deepest part of my heart. What are you waiting for? I love this scene so much. Like, this is the part of the movie where, like, it just touches my heart and makes me cry. 
you can't outsmart getting hurt is such a bar to me and is hands down one of my favorite movie scenes and lines ever because it's so true. And this is also why I say I am grateful to accept grief as a part of life because it's so true. There is no escaping grief. There is no escaping loss. There is no outsmarting it. And that's okay. As they say, grief is the price we pay for love. And oh my God, is love worth the price? Love is so worth it. The other scene that I want to share with you is from another one of my favorite movies called In Her Shoes. And to preface, in this scene, it's a woman going through the heartbreak of catching her sister having sex with her boyfriend and crying about it with her friend who is next to her trying to console her. So unlike the other scene from Something's Gotta Give that I just shared with you, I could not find a way to grab this scene from In Her Shoes and integrate it into this episode. So I'm just going to read the lines of the scene (laughs) to you. I'm going to try to act it out. I'm going to try to make it believable, make you feel it. Um, It's super short. Which one are you crying about? The predatory prick or the shit for brains tramp? Because neither one deserves your tears. You know what, Amy? I'm sure you're right. But sometimes I wish you'd just say, boy, that sucks. And I'm really sorry it happened to you. And scene. (laughs) Honestly, like, I'm just, I, I, I actually could cry just tapping into the emotions of that character who just feels heartbroken and doesn't want to hear what she doesn't or does deserve. She just wants her friend to feel with her and tell her, like, this situation just sucks so much, and I'm really sorry it happened to you. I love this scene so much because I relate to it so much. Sometimes, again, when we're grieving, we don't necessarily want someone to give us advice or tell us what we do or don't deserve. Sometimes we just want someone to acknowledge how much the whole situation simply just sucks. And this brings me to my last point. How do we show up for someone who is experiencing grief? Understanding grief is essential because once you understand grief, the stages of grief, the process of grief, the reality of grief, the truths of grief that we touched on in this conversation, and there are many more, you'll be better equipped to show up for someone who is experiencing it, to show up for someone who's grieving. As I touched on earlier in this conversation, I'd like to gently remind you that it's not your responsibility to have answers or come up with solutions. I would encourage you to show up less as a problem solver and more as a loved one who is willing and open and genuinely desiring to simply be present and help with whatever you can help with. And I'd like to point out that it's so much more helpful to, instead of saying, let me know if you need help with anything, to specifically share the ways in which you can help. Can you check in every morning? Can you bring dinner on Tuesdays? Can you always make yourself available for a text or phone call? Clarifying what you can help someone with rather than just generally offering help makes a world of a difference because often someone who is grieving doesn't have the capacity or the clarity to know what exactly they need help with. I feel like... There is so much more I could be offering you in regards to how to show up for someone who is experiencing grief. But I really like for you, all in all, to simply not underestimate the power of your presence, the gift of your presence, the medicine of your presence, just simply being present 
with that someone in your life who is grieving. And if you're the one who is grieving, also don't underestimate the power of simply being present with yourself and not forcing yourself to come up with solutions, not giving into the desire to fix anything, to not feel pressured or responsible to have the answers. More often than not, at least personally speaking, shared silence. Silence has been much more medicinal than empty noise. Don't underestimate the healing power of shared silence, shared presence, a shared meal, a shared cry, don't underestimate the power of simply being present. I also feel like I could offer you so much more in this conversation as a whole when it comes to grief and accepting grief as a part of life, as a part of the human experience. And if there is anything in specific that perhaps you'd like for me to expand on um, in another episode on grief or perhaps in a YouTube video on my channel, please feel free to reach out to me and let me know. I love receiving and, and communicating with you all and, and talking about, you know, what what we'd like to expand on, what we what you'd like for for us to talk more about. But I'm I'm going to end this conversation with um, some words that that just come to me in this moment that I feel my younger self who who was experiencing a lot of grief um, would have really liked to hear, loved to hear, appreciated hearing, needed to hear. And if you're experiencing grief, then perhaps you may open yourself up to receive these words. And if, if you do, then I pray that they are sincerely helpful to you in some way. Whatever you're feeling right now is valid. And I pray that you wholeheartedly know that. There is no right way to grieve. You're not grieving the wrong way. And you're not pressured to get over it. There is no rush. There is no rushing. There's no need to rush your grief, your feelings, this experience that you're going through that is going to change your life. And it may make the rest of your life bittersweet. But I want you to know that in the bittersweet moments, that even when grief visits, you don't have to set the celebratory aside. When the bitter visits, you don't have to set the sweetness aside. They can coexist bitterness and sweetness are allowed to coexist grief and joy are allowed to coexist grief and celebration are allowed to coexist grief and all the emotions all the other emotions that may be coming up for you are allowed to coexist and they're all valid they're all valid and you are going to be okay, but I don't even want you to feel pressured to be okay in this moment. And I want you to know that I accept you not being okay in this moment. It's okay to not be okay. It's okay if, if you're feeling all of these feelings. It's okay if you feel 
exhausted. It's okay if you feel like this experience completely changed you in ways that you didn't expect. It's okay if grief isn't here now and you feel like it should be here. There's nothing wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with you if, if, if grief isn't showing up for you right now and you feel like it should be. There is no should be's. There is no should of's or could of's or would of's. There is simply here and now and whatever is present for you. And whatever is present here and now for you is valid and is okay. There is no right way to grieve. There is no deadline to grief. I want you to know that grief is one of those experiences in life that you don't necessarily just get over. Grief is something that you don't necessarily move on from. You move forward with it. This grief, the grief that, that comes with the loss of something or someone that really touched your heart, that really meant something to you is going to be a part of your life forever. And I want you to know that it's not always going to look or feel the way that it does right now in this moment. If the grief right now in this moment feels incredibly difficult and, and overbearing and overwhelming and you don't know what to do with it, it's not always going to feel this way. Remember that all is temporary, all is seasonal, all ebbs and flows, and grief is also part of that ebb and flow. I wouldn't necessarily say that it gets easier, but I would say that you will develop a relationship with your grief in a way that is healthy with time with compassion, with love. You are worthy of gifting yourself self-validation, self-compassion, because that will be your greatest medicine in this journey, in this relationship, with this newfound grief, with old griefs, with whatever griefs you may experience in this life of yours. Allow the grief to teach you something valuable. Allow the grief to make you more present. Allow the grief to transmute into a medicine. But again, no pressure to have it figured out, to ever have it figured out. There is no right way to grieve. Everyone grieves differently. And whatever way you are grieving is your unique way of grieving. And it's valid. As you move forward with grief, I just want you to know, really know, that ultimately you are more powerful than your grief. You are more powerful than any and every emotion that visits you. And it may not feel that way right now. It may not feel that way for a long time, but I do believe in you. I do believe in your ability to move forward with this grief in a way that sweetens your life more than, more than bitters it in, in unexpected ways. This grief will change you. And I accept the way that it changes you. And I'm here. I'm present. You're not alone. You're not alone in your grief. This is a human experience. This is an experience we all go through. And again, grief looks different for everybody. There is no right way to grieve. And this grief... This grief serves as proof that you've loved. And that's so beautiful. 
And I'm so glad that you allowed yourself to love so deeply that you're grieving this deeply. Again, I'm so glad that you allowed yourself to love so deeply that you're grieving this deeply. What a heart you have. And that same heart with that same deep love that you feel has given you this deep grief, this, this deep grief, that love is still here, is still with you. And that love, that love will always be sweeter than the bitterness of your grief. Thank you so much for listening. I pray that you're walking away from this conversation feeling like you have more clarity, more, more comfort, more confidence in any way, shape, or form. I know this may not be the most uplifting conversation, but talking about these inevitabilities of the life of, of the human experience I feel is uplifting in its own way because it's truth. And I don't doubt that we will speak on grief and loss again in this podcast community. I'm sending such a warm hug to all of you who may be experiencing grief at this time. Again, thank you for being here. Thank you for bringing me into your precious present moment. And I look forward to exchanging conversation with you in the next episode. So much love and gratitude. Your girl, your host, Jocelyn.